It makes me so angry. Don't get angry. It makes me so angry. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. Don't get angry. Bye, baby. Bye, cat. Meow, 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 meow. Song 27 is my song. Mine. Song 27. The Lord is my God and my rock. Of whom shall I be afraid? Nobody. On one side or the other. One side or the other is going to win. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, there can be... A, 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 uh, a, a way of working, a way of living together peacefully, but it's difficult, you know, because there are differences on fundamental things that really can't be compromised. Well, I mean, the, the first thing I think is to tell me when the non tumultuous time has been here. I mean, you look at the court, what the court was doing in the 60s, what the court was doing the, during the New Deal, what the court was doing. Uh, you know, after Dred Scott and all this, it's kind of a regular thing. Well, the left is now trying their best James O'Keefe impersonation with undercover recordings of Supreme Court Justices Alito and Roberts, as well as the wife of Samuel Alito. This all comes after the so-called controversy regarding the flags at the Alito residence. At one point, they flew an upside-down American flag, and at their beach house, they flew the Appeal to Heaven flag. Of course, the upside-down flag is to show a nation in distress, and the Appeal to Heaven flag has been around for a very long time, dating back to the American Revolution. I don't think many reasonable people would care what flag a particular Supreme Court Justice flies at his home, even more so because we're talking about actual American flags here. I realize the argument coming from the left is that this is not good for the appearance of impartiality, but there is no actual impartiality on the Supreme Court. We have conservative-leaning judges, and we have progressive leftist-leaning judges. Suggesting otherwise is like teaching a civics class to third graders. The other argument being made is that the Upside Down flag and the Appeal to Heaven flag both made an appearance at the January 6th Mostly Peaceful protest. So apparently the new standard is that if a flag is flown somewhere, then in perpetuity that flag's meaning is attached to that particular event. This particular narrative was used by CNN when they showed a graphic that had the Appeal to Heaven flag at the January 6th Mostly Peaceful protest side by side with the Beach House flying the same flag. And of course this only works if you buy into the narrative that January 6th was the worst thing since 9-11 and Pearl Harbor. So as I mentioned before, after this very serious scandal, some left-wing activists went in undercover recorded the Supreme Court justices and Alito's wife. Now of course the media for the most part is reporting this as some sort of gotcha moment, but personally I don't really see anything nefarious going on here. It seems like for the most part they're just having a good time having conversations with people, and it seems like Alito's wife feels as though she's being personally attacked by all of this media coverage. But that's not up for me to decide, here's the clips and you can judge for yourself. I'm sorry, is, are, are you Ms. Alito? I am. Hi, Hi. my name's Lauren. I, I just met these ladies tonight, but Very cool. um, I'm a huge fan of your husband. Mm -hmm. and, um, I just want to tell you that, like, I... It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's not okay, though. It's not okay. It's okay. It's okay because I, if they come back to me, I'll get them. I'm going to be liberated, and I'm going to get them. What do you mean by... Oh, uh, there's a five-year defamation statute of limitations. <laughs> but I, I don't know what you mean by they, like... By the media. Oh, okay. Come on. Come on, I'll get you. Come on. You know, um, I was denigrated early on in, when we first came to town. And the woman then get, won a Pulitzer Prize. She was commenting on my clothes. She said that I wore a baby blanket one day. And the next time I had on a Lazy Boy recliner pattern suit. And so when she won her Pulitzer, I called her up and I said, Hello, is this Robin Gavon of the New York Times? Yes, it is. I said, Oh, I'm so proud of you. You're getting a Pulitzer Prize. I said, and will you be wearing Balanchega? And she goes, no. I said, why not? She said, well, it doesn't flatter me. I said, oh, come on. Such a high-end thing. It doesn't flatter you? And then I said to her, you know, it's a beautiful day. It's April 2006. I said, maybe you want to go outside today in New York. It's really beautiful. Take a walk and enjoy life. She never came after me again, but she went after Jane Roberts again. That's why she got her poster between, between Jane and me, criticizing the clothes that Jane put the children in and the clothes that we wore. But why do you think they're coming after you? They're, they because, are. I mean, like, the, the, the whole, like, appeal to have heaven flag was, like, bullshit, right? Right, right, but that's, you know, the, the other thing is the fem Nazis believe that he should control me. 
Yeah. So what the hell? He never controls me. But like, I have the same flag. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. No, but like a lot of people fly that fucking flag. Don't worry about it, baby. Part, I'm sorry. I, it's all right. it's I, all right. I should watch my language. It's all right. I, I, it's all right. I'm sorry. I did, I did not mean. It's to, okay. It's okay. No, it's but okay. it makes me so angry. Don't get angry. It makes me so angry. Don't get angry. Get angry. Bye, baby. Bye, cat. Meow, 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 meow. Mow, mow. She's a bad girl. Cat's escort, Lewis. Hi, Lewis. Good to see you. Likewise. I'm Natasha. Nice to meet Hi, you. Hi, Natasha. Yes, we're never going back to uh, Wounded Warriors, I'm afraid. Isn't that awful, though? Why? Oh, because well, of the security. Other, uh, the yeah. security and all that. That's why we don't it's so we did that. We did that. Wonderful. You, know, it, you really did. Something to be really proud of. Do you know that they created and ran the Wounded Warriors program here? You would never know that because of how they're trying to prove you. Oh, ignore all that. The reality. The reality. I don't need their approval for anything in my life. I need nothing from them. You don't. But the problem is that they use you to fuck. Part of my language. Part of my language. Your biography. <laughs> Lewis, I like you. You deserve it. Right. Thank you. They, Take care. Okay. They're persecuting you. They're persecuting you. And you're like a, a convenient stand-down for anybody who's religious. Look at me. I'm German. I'm German. My heritage is German. You come after me, I'm going to give it back to you. And there will be a way. It doesn't have to be now. But there will be a way. They will know. Just don't worry about it. God, you, you read the Bible. Psalm 27 is my song. Mine. Psalm 27. The Lord is my God and my rock. Of whom shall I be afraid? I love, I love that you have that attitude because that's more of what we need. I was telling your husband, I was like, and it, it should give you like a little bit of background. So I met him last year at this dinner. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, I was like, well, this country is so polarized. How do we repair that rift? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know. It's not our role. And I told him this year, I'm like, you know, for the past year, I remembered our conversation. And I looked at what happened to you and your wife. And I'm like, how is there any negotiating with the radical left? There's not. There's not. You cannot negotiate with the radical left. You have to just win. They feel. They feel. You they have, don't think. No, but you have to win. And if we want to take this country back to like a godly place, to a moral place, that means that we actually have to just fucking... Pardon my language again. I'm so sorry. You know what I want? I want a sacred heart of Jesus flag because I have to look across the lagoon at the pride flag for the next month. Exactly. And, and he's like, oh, please don't put up a flag. I said, I won't do it because I'm deferring to you. But when you are free of this nonsense, I'm putting it up and I'm going to send them a message every day. Maybe every week I'll be changing the flags. There'll be all kinds. I made a flag in my head. This is how I, I satisfy myself. I made a flag. It's white. And it's yellow and orange flames around it. And in the middle is the word vergogna. Vergogna in Italian means shame. Vergogna. V-E-R-G-O-G-N-A. Vergogna. Shame, shame, shame on you. You know. Anyway. Well, I, I, I just wanted to let you know, you have a lot of people rooting for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. that you tell Justice Alito that, like, he is a fighter and we appreciate him and he has all the grit and I know it's got to be terrible what your family, what you and your family are going through right now, so I'm just so sorry. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But, um, and I'm sure you don't remember this at all, but what I would asked you about um, was about the polarization in this country, about, like, how do we repair that rift? And considering everything that's been going on in the past year, you know, as a Catholic and as someone who, like, really cherishes my faith, I just don't, I don't know that we can negotiate with the left in the way that, like, needs to happen for the polarization to end. I think that it's a matter of, like, 
disappointing. I think you're probably right. I mean, one side or the other, one side or the other is going to win. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, there can be a, 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 a way of working, a way of living together peacefully, but it's difficult, you know, because there are differences on fundamental things that really can't be compromised. You know, really can't be compromised. So it's not like we're going to split the difference. And, and that's what I'm saying. I just, I think that the solution really is like winning the moral argument. Like people in this country who believe in God have got to keep fighting for that to return our country to a place of, of godliness. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you. Because we look at like the decline of our society, the decline of the nuclear family, and liberals, I just feel like, want to see that happen and proliferate. And I think we've been too permissive to say, oh, you know, okay. I understand the Constitution. I understand, I like, want to interrupt. Totally appropriate with yeah. um, you know the jurisprudence of it all, but you know uh, just to be totally heated. Like, how do we get America back to a place of like um, really like less polarization? Because I feel like the court is going undergoing this period of turmoil. Like people don't trust in. I think just the like this is like the last bastion of I think like public trust. And like, how do we get back to that? I wish I knew. I don't know. Uh, it's easy to, bl to blame the media, but I do blame them. Because they do nothing but criticize us. And so they have really eroded trust in, in the court. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, ordinary people, you know, ordinary isn't the right word. American citizens in general need to work on this to try to heal this polarization because it's very dangerous. I do believe it's very dangerous. I think it's taking us to the brink of, you know, a very serious and, and perhaps like non-repairable rifts in the country. And I, for one, am someone like, I support your ruling on dogs. I support, like, I am very pro-life, but like, you know, I don't know how we bridge that gap. You know, like, how do we get people... Squeeze I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I don't know. It's not... I don't so think it's something the, we can do. But the court can't do anything to... So. I mean, we have a very defined role. Yeah. We need to do what we're supposed to do. But... This is a bigger problem. This is way above us. So I wish I knew the answer. I do. But you guys haven't been able to find like the leaker. Pardon? The leaker, like the. Are you guys being able well, to figure that out? It's hard. You know, you can't name somebody unless you know for sure. And uh, we don't have the the power to do the things that would be necessary to try to figure out, to nail down exactly who did it. That's the problem. And even then, we might not be able to do it. But we don't have the power to subpoena people to testify, to uh, subpoena records, uh, phone records, or other things like that. We don't have that authority, so. What? It just seems crazy that you can't because it's so detrimental to the trust the public places in the Supreme Court. Yeah, well, we're not a law enforcement agency, you know. It's um, People have, a, have certain rights to privacy, so law enforcement agencies can issue subpoenas and get search warrants and all that sort of thing, but we can't do that. So, you know, our marshal did as much as she could do. That was limited. So that was exhausted. She did what she could do. But, you know, Seriously, I, I just want
wanted to express my, 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 my gratitude for everything that you're doing because it's a, a really important fight for um, the rights of the unborn. And I know a lot of people don't appreciate that, but it's important. So thank you. I did want to ask you, like, specifically, like, with everything that's going on right now, it's just, you know, it's a very tumultuous time in the country, and I'm just curious, like, from your perspective on the court, like, how do we start to repair the the first thing I think is to tell me when the non-tumultuous time has been here. I mean, you look at the court, what the court was doing in the 60s, what the court was doing the, during the New Deal, what the court was doing, uh, you know, after Dred Scott and all this. It's kind of a regular thing. People think it's so different and special. It, it's been pretty tumultuous for a long time. So you Vietnam, think this is a normal period? You know, I don't know if it's normal. I mean, since I've been here all 20 years, there have been quieter times. Uh, but the idea that the court is in the middle of a lot of tumultuous stuff going on, that's nothing new. I guess I wouldn't say that it's not, it's not like it's an innovative thing. It's not new. I guess I just, I really feel like we're at a point in our country where the polarization is so extreme yeah. that it might be irreparable. Oh, and I don't think that. I think oh, that... Oh, it's, it's uh, extreme. is like the Civil War. We did that uh, during Vietnam. People were getting killed in... I was there in Vietnam. It's a, it, it, this is all right. I mean, it's uh, it's not all right, but it's not like it's as dramatically different people as. It, it's a common thing. People with their own perspective think this is so extraordinary. But, uh, I don't know. But you don't think there's like a a role for the court in like guiding us toward a more moral path? No, I think the role for the court is deciding the cases. If I start, would you want me to be in charge of guiding us toward a more moral path? That's for the people we elect. That's not for lawyers. Well, I guess I just, I believe that the founders who are godly, like, we're, we're, we're Christians. And right. I think that we live in a Christian nation and that our Supreme Court should be guiding us true. in that path. Yeah, I don't know that we live in a Christian nation. I know a lot of Jewish and Muslim friends who would say, maybe not. Uh, and it's not our job to do that. It's our job to decide the, the cases as best we can. Well, Except I... Much more modest job than other people okay. I don't want to monopolize your time. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Not at all. Not at all. Thank you so much. Okay.